Welcome to Jenny's Paleontology lesson and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about something very interesting, something actually related to a topic that we've brought up on this channel before. So as you may know, I went to the Stones and Bones program, which was a four week long paleontology summer program during the summer of my sophomore year. And it was such an amazing program. I met so many cool people. And during that program, we went to the Green River Lake formation and more specifically to the FBM or the fossil butte member and we found this really wide array of things that you know I could have never imagined it was such a great experience so in this video I'm gonna be talking more about some of the common fish species that could be found at FBM so without further ado let's get started So to kick things off, let's start by talking about nideas. Nideas are herring-like fish that lived within freshwater environments, rivers, or lakes within North America. They're especially found in abundance at the Green River Lake Formation, where we were at, and um, they lived during the Eocene epoch, which um, lasts from 56 to 39.5 million years ago. Um, and that is within the Paleogene period and the Cenozoic era. So these nideas, they fed on either zooplankton or small invertebrates, and they can be up to about 25 centimeters long. So as you can tell how I introduced nidea, a lot of literature also cites nideas as herring-like. So what are herrings? So just in case you don't know, herrings are forage fish that move, move around in large schools around fishing banks and near the coast, and they're found particularly in shallow and temperate waters. And this is exactly like nidias because they usually travel around in large schools, and they're found in these large schools, which can indicate mass murders. So these mass die-offs of nidias can actually be a result of their sensitivity to water chemistry. So just like modern herring or salmon, um, nidias are very, very sensitive to the the different components and percentages of chemicals within the water. So a slight tip off of the usual balance, say if there was a storm and it sort of recycled water from the benthic layer up to the you know the surface and um, the nideas are exposed to that, that could result in a massive die-off. And thanks to a lot of commercial excavations, nideas is officially one of the most excavated and well-known fish fossils around the world. A fun fact about nideas is that nideas are actually the state fossil of Wyoming, which is where we were at during the Stones and Bones excavation. Next up, we have Diplomistus, which is also a type of fish that lived in um, freshwater lakes and rivers within North America and are found in great abundance at the Green River Lake Formation. They lived during the Lower Eocene, which is roughly 50 million years ago. They are roughly about 50 centimeters long, and the longest Diplomistus ever found is about 65 centimeters. Um, their features suggest that they are a surface feeding fish as suggested by their upturned mouth. And um, fossil records suggest that they often ate nideas as a lot of records, a lot of fossils are found, excuse me, of um, these diplomistas with their mouths wide open with a nidea jammed in it. It seemed like they just swallowed an idea too big for their own taste. A fun fact about Diplomistus is that it's actually named by Edward Drinker Cope, who was in the infamous Bones Wars um, that involved two rivaling paleontologists, Cope and Marsh. Finally, last but not least, are Priscocaris. So they also lived, obviously, in freshwater lakes and rivers in North America, found in abundance within the Grimber Lake Formation in Wyoming and Utah, and they lived during the Middle Eocene. Um, and some of the characteristics of Priscocaris include some of the bodily characteristics of Priscocaris is that it sort of resembles the body of a sunfish with very stout um 
anal and dorsal spikes. And sunfish is one of the heaviest known bony fishes that are native to temperate or tropical waters. And as you can see in this picture here, it sort of resembles a fish head with a pretty much flattened body. Fun fact about Priscacara is that the name Priscacara actually means primitive head. So that's all I have for you guys today. What did you think about three species of fish that I mentioned within this video? Are you interested in going on maybe a fossil excavation trip at the FBM? Um, please leave something in the comment section or the discussion session um, below. And if you're interested in learning more about Stones and Bones or these summer opportunities, um, there's a series of videos that I did are sort of like your presentation on Stones and Bones that I will link um, in the description section down below so you can go and check that out and um please stay healthy during this time drink lots of water stay indoors and hopefully see you next time